first things first, let's go to Romans chapter 3. That's where we're going to start this one out today. Romans is one of my favorite books. I took a class on it in college, um, so I have a lot of thoughts about the book overall, just kind of thinking through Romans and talking through a bunch of stuff, so that's why it's come up several times, but um, this is kind of coming up for a different reason than normal, so we're going to go th- Romans chapter 3, starting in verse 10, is where we're kind of starting, so um, yeah, as it is written... None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. So that's kind of where we're starting today. Um, This is one of those verses where it's like, dang, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Oof. Like, it's hard to kind of wrap your mind around how heavy that that is. And, And like understanding too like i am i am incapable of good Mm -hmm. like it's not just that i need to strive to do good and that i need to be a good person it's like nope like you are incapable in your own strength of doing good period Mm -hmm. right which is like a terrifying prospect overall it's like (laughs) like because as christians especially as like younger christians i feel like we strive a lot to like you know to do good, right? Mm-hmm. And and to to be good people. And yet this verse is telling us, no, that's impossible. No one is good. Not even a single person is good. But the thing that I actually want to focus on is how this verse is written overall. Mm-hmm. So what are the first three words of, of this of this uh passage? That As, we're it, is written. So it, was, As it is written. So I was wondering yeah. because mine like indents. Yeah. Um, And I'm like, what? Where is this from? (laughs) What's he quoting? Yeah. So Paul is the author of Romans, right? Um, Paul, obviously the most prolific writer of the New Testament, wrote most of the New Testament, right? Um, In his letters and different things. And so Paul is obviously a huge character that we need to know about, we need to study about. And we know that Paul is a Pharisee. Mm-hmm. Right. So or he used to be at least right where he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was a Jew amongst Jews. He mm-hmm. knew the letter of the law. He understood the Torah. He it was his life. Right. And so as we think about that, that's the kind of perspective that we come to Paul with. And so when he writes his letters, we kind of take from that lens because we're understanding how he's writing from. Mm-hmm. And so as he's writing this, he, when he says things like as it is written or as the word says or as the law says, right, we can always kind of pinpoint back to where he's talking about, which is why I love the scriptures. And if you've ever seen that diagram, um, I love that diagram of how uh, the Bible throughout all of time, right? You see all the books of the Bible, but then you see all these reference points and it creates this like really cool graphical image. Have you seen those Mm -mm. where it's like, I'll try to put it in if I, if I remember, but, um, basically it's this big line, right? And there's all these reference points that jump from, from point to point to point. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them that Mm -hmm. just go from book to book, to book, to book, to book from the, from the end of revelation to the beginning of Genesis. Mm -hmm. And so it's like this really amazing image showing that even though there's all these authors, everything is referencing everything, right? Old Testament is referencing Jesus and Jesus is referencing all these Old Testament passages and Jesus is referencing the future of different things and all these different things are all connected together, right? And Paul obviously does this in a great way. When we went through the book of John, we called these things hyperlinks, right? right? So in today's language, as we talk about this, we have the understanding of like when you send an email, you can hyperlink a, a certain you know text so that we can you can click on that text and then it brings you to a different location which will give you more interweb. information, right on the on the onlines. And so, <laughs> so a lot of authors do this quite a bit. John does that a lot in his in his writings, but so do a lot of other authors because they're Jewish in mm-hmm. nature. And so as these Jewish writers write about what they're talking about, of course the basis of that is going to be on the law. It's going to be on what they understood to be the truth and and what they understood to kind of build their whole uh, identification of what life was in general, right? And so Paul here is taking from uh, several different scriptures in the Old Testament. We'll take a look at those in a second. But I love the way that he kind of builds on these and and how he's he's saying these certain things. But it would have meant so much more to the Jewish people that were listening to him because he would have given them more perspective through these other verses. Mm -hmm. So he's assuming the person knows as it is written, right? He's reminding them of these things and he's kind of paraphrasing a little bit of certain things. But he's pulling from these Old Testament passages from Psalms and Isaiah Mm -hmm. that 
allow him to kind of make these points that he's making, right? right? So let's take a look at those um, just as kind of like a, a, mm. a look back here to kind of show how, how cool the Bible is. This is the kind of stuff that I get really excited about because we can see how everything is connected and how like these people aren't just talking out of their butts, right? It's not just like this random person who's like, oh, I think this is true, so this is how it is, right? right. He's using specific scriptures to dive into specific things. <clears throat> um, and so the first one is um, Psalm 14, and we'll go there, just a small small section there. Um, We're going there. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I just want to uh, read it real fast. So these, these are part <clears throat> of your, th- your verses? It's just part of this one. Um, and it, we're not going to dive into everything, but, um, so, uh, 14, one through three, it says the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable, abominable deeds. There is no one who does good, mm-hmm. right? The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. So that's where he's pulling this se- that section of what he's saying, right? Yeah. He's paraphrasing those three verses all together. Right. Then we go to Psalm 53. Real quick before we go to that, I'd really love for you to subscribe or follow or whatever you need to do on the platform that you're listening to this on. It would really help us out since we're just getting started. Thanks so much. And this is um, verses one through three as well. And again, it's, it's taking that exact same kind of thinking. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. So it's 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 quoting itself already, right? right? <laughs> the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Uh, they are corrupt, doing abom- abominable inequity. There is none who does good. God looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have uh, they have all fallen away. Together they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. So again, it's taking that phrase kind of paraphrasing into Paul wants to say there and using that again. And then the last one is in Isaiah 59. Um, 59. And this is uh, two through eight here. But your iniquities have, have made a separation between you and your God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear for your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue mutters wickedness. No one enters suit justly. No one goes to law. Honestly, they rely on empty pleas. They speak lies. They conceive mischief and give birth to iniquity. They hatch adder's eggs or snake's eggs. They weave the spider's web. He who eats their eggs dies. And f- and from one that is crushed, a viper is hatched. Their webs will not serve as clothing. Men will not cover themselves with what, what they make. Their works are works of iniquity, and deeds of violence are in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Desolation and destruction are in their highways. The ways of peace they do not know, and there is no justice in their paths. They have made their roads crooked. No one who treads on them knows peace. So he's taking these verses, Mm -hmm. right? And he's amalgamating them all into Romans 3 there. And he's kind of reminding them because it's not just that he's wanting them to look at these specific portions of the verses, but also probably that they remember that whole entire chapter, Mm -hmm. right? Or that whole entire section of scripture. Obviously there wouldn't be chapters and verses back then. Would they have it memorized? The Jews would, mm-hmm. um, or at least they would be familiar with the passages, right? But he's reminding them in this moment, and as he's writing to the like the Romans, like maybe some of them wouldn't, maybe some of them would, right? Mm-hmm. But um, but he's obviously speaking from this lens again, as being a Pharisee, as someone who does know this is his life, yeah, right? So he's yeah. pulling from these past things. So I just love that about Scripture right. that it's not just some random person. Like this is how people frame it so often as they talk about Scripture. It's like. Oh, why should I believe in a book that is like, you know, this one guy like wrote all this stuff and he's just like, oh, he's so smart. He knows everything, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, (laughs) it's such a dumb framing of an understanding of biblical knowledge. You know, they don't understand the Bible. They don't realize how intertwined it is. Like you were saying, like it's not just one person saying one thing. It's it's several people. I love the way uh, Vody Bauckham says it. He's like, it's it's a, a a book written by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses, and yeah. like it's he the way he says is weird more, but, <laughs> but I don't remember. <laughs> so, but yeah, like yeah. It, there's there's no way like they're not just lining up. Hey, what did you say? Let me yeah, let yeah. me go say what I'm gonna say. You know, like 
Yeah, it, it's it, to me, it's so profound to see. Like, this is such a small example, mm -hmm. but like, even Christ does this. We've talked about this before, but like, when he's on the cross and he's saying, when he's when he's on the cross and he's saying specific things, he's saying, "My God, My God, why have you forsaken me?" He's not actually saying like. He's not actually like yelling at God and being mad at him. Psalm 22. Like it, it is a callback to a psalm, mm -hmm. right? And he's using that specific verse in order to call back that whole entire passage, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> and so when we think about these things, we can't just think about it in a limited like American English sense, which is what we often do. Because we're often or like... human sense. Or in a human sense, yeah. yeah. And we often fall into this like... Um, misunderstanding of what they actually meant when they're talking about these things, mm -hmm. right? And so as he's going back to these other Psalms, like there's a, 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 a really um, heavy verse that, is, that this is built on, mm -hmm. right? Which is that like, God is looking for anybody that's seeking him and nobody is. Mm -hmm. Not even a single person is, is looking for him. They're not seeking for him. Mm -hmm. and, and what we come out of that in Romans 3 is we are not able to mm -hmm. in our own strength. We're not able to do good. Right. And so as we read throughout the rest of the scripture, we, we see another verse, do good, love mercy, walk humbly with your God, you know? And like, how, like, doesn't that contradict? Well, no, because without God, we are unable to do good. Mm -hmm. Right. And so as we walk humbly with our God, as we realize the iniquity that we have and the failures that we have, then we are able to walk in that mm -hmm. we're able to walk and do good, not through our own strength, but through God's, not for our glorification, but for God's glorification, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think this is something that we just miss. I think it's something that I miss a lot because I think, how can I do good rather than what does God want me to do? Yeah. Right. Because I want to be the best person that I can, but sometimes I have wrong mentality in that. Sometimes I think of my own kingdom rather than God's kingdom. Right. You know, that's powerful. Yeah. Anyway, these are the kind of things I get excited about, like how everything gets connected there. It's like so cool to be. Hey, Brandon here. If you want to check out this full episode, you can do that on patreon.com slash the snipe life. This is the best way to help us to support what we're doing here on the Better Not Easy channel. Thank you very much. So just remember that following Jesus is better not easy.